My question is how is it possible for the FDA to approve a time-release mercury implant that is by far the predominant source of an individual's exposure to mercury? I practiced employee protected mercury-free dentistry for 30 years. In that time, I've seen hundreds of people's lives dramatically improved once these mercury-leaking implants were safely removed. I've seen infertile women make a whole family, chronic high blood pressure return to normal, and multiple sclerosis victims totally recover. In fact, it's just such a remarkable recovery that started me on this odyssey of trying to get the regulatory agencies of the U.S. government to fulfill their sworn obligation to us, the people. I'd like you to meet another recovered MS victim, Stacy Case, who should not have been poisoned by her fillings except for the dereliction of duty in Washington, D.C. Stacy, tell them your story. Thank you, Dr. Kennedy. My name is Stacy Case. I'm a television journalist of 20 years. I anchor the evening newscast in Nashville, working on consumer and investigative reports. Prior to joining Fox, I worked at CBS News as a national correspondent. I have spent two decades helping right wrongs, shining a light on injustice, searching for the truth. I've covered the White House, Congress, the United Nations, and yes, FDA regulatory hearings, always with impartiality. But today, I stand before you not as an impartial journalist, but as an injured consumer. Nearly four years ago, I let a dentist talk me into having four 30-year-old silver mercury fillings replaced because he said they were cracked. Your agency at the time, though, the FDA, had done nothing to warn me, an educated professional, that this was a health hazard. This is a great injustice. I had four removed and replaced with four new shiny mercury fillings because that's what insurance covers. Within a few days, I had this heavy metal taste in my mouth. I kept chewing gum to try to make it go away. As you know from watching Dr. Kennedy's smoking teeth video, that emits more mercury vapor, which is neurotoxic. So within a few weeks, I developed deep, painful headaches. Within a few months, I was experiencing a myriad of neurological symptoms. The sensation of cold water running down my head, pinpricks up and down my arms, having trouble with word recall, cognitive symptoms, but, which, by the way, is a real problem in my profession. Within four months, blurred vision in one eye, tinnitus ringing in the ear. Seven months after that dental work, I got out of bed one morning, July 7, 2008, and could not walk. My husband took me to the doctor who this time said, Mrs. Case, you either have MS or brain tumor. The MS diagnosis came within just a few days. My children were two and three at the time. My immediate concern was, will I be caring for them or will it be the other way around? I now know that I and millions of other Americans are genetically predisposed to autoimmune disease and these mercury fillings are the trigger in many cases. As I'm in the trenches with this disease, though, the FDA in 2009 ruled amalgam safe for everyone once again, a missed opportunity. Thankfully, my journalistic instincts kicked in. I spent weeks on the phone and online researching MS and its triggers. I read several dozen scientific studies. One such study, 1990 University of Denmark, proved monkeys with mercury dental fillings stored it in their spinal ganglia, pituitary gland, and many other organs. This stuff seeps into the body from the day it is implanted. Then one day you reach the tipping point like I did and disease sets in. In my research, I've uncovered plenty of people who've been miraculously cured of MS, all of whom had something interesting in common. They once had these mercury fillings too. So I decided after much thought and prayer to make myself the lab rat. What did I have to lose? I had my fillings removed using the IAOMT guidelines, the only safe method. Within a week, wouldn't you know it, I was 50% better. My body was calming down. I then began IV chelation along with a myriad of vitamins, supplements, minerals, acupuncture, and an anti-inflammatory diet, which is very boring to eat. And by my first year checkup with my neurologist, I was in remission from MS and have been ever since and am on no MS medications because my neurologist says they aren't necessary. I'm doing too well. I have spent $35,000 out of pocket on this elective dental work and these alternative therapies that I've just described to you to rebuild my body and right this wrong. Thank you for convening a scientific panel to reconsider the safety of amalgam. Your handpicked 
leading scientists in 2006 and 2010 have made you keenly aware of the health risks and the disease causation. Please do not ignore them or injured consumers like me any longer. You really want to help this country get health care costs under control? Ban amalgam. You really want to see a cure for many autoimmune diseases? Ban amalgam. You really want to ensure American moms like me can play chase with their children in the yard? Ban amalgam. After two decades in the news business, I know the truth, and the truth is silver mercury fillings are causing disease, and they are making people sick, keeping them sick, so help me God. Use your power and position for good, Dr. Sharon. Leave a legacy. Please write this wrong. My website is www.mercurymom.com. Thank you. So the symptoms just added on during a period of time. First it was a heavy metal taste in my mouth and then it was pinpricks up and down my arms. It was a sensation of cold water running down my head. There were times when I felt like somebody was touching my arm and I would turn around and nobody's there. It felt like somebody's hand, a warm hand was on my arm. I was noticing that I had blurred vision in one eye, ringing of the ear and sort of a feeling of my hearing going out from time to time and then it would come back. My left leg would fall asleep while I was standing up. No blood circulation was cut off. It would just fall asleep spontaneously. I also was noticing some cognitive issues. I, I was having a, a real hard time with word recall. I would get in the middle of a sentence and could not get to the next point. I uh, was also having some deep, deep, very painful, almost debilitating headaches. And, and I'm not really someone who's prone to headaches and have never had a migraine, so I did, didn't know what this was, but there were many days when these headaches almost made my eyes cross and, and I would have to go lay down in the middle of the day. This all culminated ultimately on July 7, 2008 when I got out of bed that morning and could not walk. I stumbled around, my legs wouldn't work, they were weak and wobbly and I was veering to the left and then back to the right like a drunken sailor. So upon my first checkup with my neurologist, by this point I had already had the silver fillings out and was uh, undergoing some chelation therapy and I was feeling so much better, so much better. I could just feel my body relaxing and falling back into its normal rhythm. And I, I mentioned this to the neurologist whenever he looked at my updated MRI. He said, well, you're stable today. and..." I still don't think there's any reason to put you on MS drugs because you would need to be worse for us to start you on those medications. They're really strong medications with lots of side effects. You seem to be doing so well. We're just going to hold off a little while and monitor you some more. And I said, I'd really like to tell you what I've been doing uh, since I saw you last. I said, I got these silver fillings out and you know they're 50% mercury and I, I got them out using this specific protocol because it releases mercury vapor when you release when you remove them and I've been undergoing intravenous chelation and am on all these vitamins and suppl supplements and minerals and B12 shots to hopefully rebuild my body from the inside out and he said well fair enough keep doing what you're doing I said I really want you to know more about this maybe you can tell some more of your patients Fair enough. Keep doing what you're doing. So, so now you know there's no link between these fillings and MS. We've been over this. There is no link. I said thank you very much. I'll see you next year. Mainstream neurologists most do not acknowledge the connection. No, unfortunately. Okay. I, I would say I am about 98 percent. I am almost there. I need to do one more round of chelation. I have basically no symptoms anymore. Occasionally I will feel a fasciculation which is just a little twitch, like a little muscle twitch. Um, but other than that I may feel a fasciculation once or twice a day. But I do know that I'm still undergoing chelation for a reason and that's because I still do have heavy metal toxicity. So I feel once I get through this and I'll keep on the vitamins, minerals, supplements um, that help my body do what it needs to do, I think I'll be completely cured. Uh, coming up this July, if I get another good bill of health at the neurologist and another good MRI, that would be four years in remission. Yeah. I have no doubt if I had not taken this other path, I would have been in a wheelchair within five years. I think you should talk about that. Until the age of 37, I was the only person in my family without an autoimmune disease. And my family always teased me, oh, she's Miss health queen. Oh, there she goes running again. 
oh, she watches what she eats, it's so boring how she eats, and just have another piece of cake. You know, they're always teasing me. And my father has, um, uh, my father has thyroid disease, my sister has thyroid disease, my mother has Crohn's disease, my uncle has Crohn's disease, and I have several other people in my family who have Crohn's disease. So there's plenty of autoimmune disease in my family. Huh? Do they have fillings? They all have silver fillings, yes. Yes, they do. <laughs> I've told them they need to go get them out, but they aren't listening to me either. Very hard. That is the saving grace. I am glad that this happened to me because if it had not happened to me and my children had fillings and we had gone to the dentist and the dentist said, your insurance covers the silver ones. Do you want the silver ones or the white ones? I would have thought, well, I had silver ones my whole life. I'm just fine. Let's get them some silver ones. Now I know that's a bad choice. And the effects are cumulative over time until you reach the tipping point, at which point the body succumbs to disease. And that's what happened to me. Okay. This is my life's work. I've spent 20 years as a television journalist, always working for the next step up, the next big story, the next big investigative report, that was my goal. My goal now is educating as many people who are willing to listen that silver fillings are 50% mercury and if you have a genetic predisposition to autoimmune disease, i.e. your mom or dad, grandfather, grandmother have an autoimmune disease, these fillings can be the trigger and you need to do something about it. And if you're going to get them removed, get them removed using the only safe protocol there is, and that is from the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology.